Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. It's Kiana Sharice. And today I'm here with my May anime wrap up, roundup. Um, I forget what I'm calling it, but that's what I'm here with. This is where I talk about the anime I watched or the manga that I've read in the previous month. And just like real quick, just say like what I'm watching, what's going on, what I'm thinking, like just a pretty quick video, but I like doing them. I really like doing them because I feel like it helps keep me on track like no I told them I was gonna finish this this month so let me finish it like it helps kind of push me hopefully the lighting is tolerable I um actually I got some Wendy's while I was out and I am fading fast I guess this is um the price of being close to 30 and having that kind of food because I'm gonna need a nap but I do want to get this video up and on my channel pretty soon so first of all, I'm pretty sure it was last month I told y'all I was giving Yasuke a try and I talked about the first episode there, but I decided to, you know, give it a chance and I watched the second episode and I was just like, I'm not into it. This is just like forgetting what it's about. This is just not my kind of show. I like some elements of it. The music is actually really good, but it's just like, it's not the type of show I would watch. I personally don't care for the magical mecha elements of it. I don't know. It's not it's not what I thought I was going to get, but also didn't really like look up what I was going to get either. I don't know. Like I said, regardless of all that, I just it's not my type of show. So, we're going to just cross that off the list. Now, Invincible, I'm late on this one, but it's not I don't think it's not an anime but I feel like I can talk about it here anyways. I watched the first two episodes and I'm like, what? <laughs> Cause the main scene from the first episode, I did see that going around on Twitter and I was just like, what is this? So I checked it out and I actually am quite intrigued. It's it's kind of like, you, you know what? I never really watched um, most of those superhero like comic hero type of shows growing up it's not my thing but some of the things going on I think are in being interestingly explored so I'm gonna finish that up am I gonna claim to finish it this month okay I'm gonna claim I'm, I'm finishing it this month Ooh, so the next show I was actually on um TikTok and this girl I follow I think her name is Morgan the Fairy she was just talking about anime that she's like that she likes but she's hesitant to recommend and it was Madoka Magica so I was like bet I'm gonna check it out and I think I'm I want to see I'm three or four episodes in I think it's only 12 episodes long and then I was googling there's it seems there'd be like a movie or two or I think there is a movie and a new movie is coming out soon so um, I need to check into that and I'm not sure if I really like it but I do want to know what happens kind of like a quick synopsis is it's a show about magical girls who fight witches and this girl Madoka is approached to she's asked if she wants to be a magical girl and stuff happens her and her friend are approached and like stuff happens after that dealing with the magical girls and the witches i do think the art style is pretty interesting it kind of reminds me of like a you know those cook those cooking mama games like it looks like that game they took that and then animated it it looks really different than most anime i've seen it, it feels really different it actually feels like so bright. I almost want to turn my TV brightness down because it feels like so bright. But I will say the scenes when they're in the labyrinths, which you'll know what that is if you watch, it's almost psychedelic. Like that's pretty crazy. It's interesting how you can have these different art styles in one show. Like, I mean, it's nothing crazy, but I mean, I thought it was super interesting. Just like, I don't know. The contrast was just like, ooh, I'm interested. I want to know what happens. So I'm also going to put that on my list for finishing this month unless I, like I said, I'm kind of mid-range. It's like one of those, sometimes I just want to know what happens, but I don't actually feel like watching. So I'll just go read it. Um, and I feel like that might, I'm tempted to do that with this one. But I'm going to give it like an episode or two more. Some, if something did interesting that just happened, um, I think the third episode or so. So not that it hasn't all, but something, something like, ooh had just happened um that might not be the right reaction once you see what I'm talking about but <laughs> yeah so it's picking up for me 
Next up, we have Sailor Moon Crystal. And I was re-watching um, the first three seasons in preparation for the Sailor Moon Eternal movies that are coming out. For me, they're coming out tomorrow. No, they're today's Tuesday. So for me, they're coming out on Thursday. Well, for everyone, they're coming out on Thursday. They're coming out in two days from now for me. And I was trying to rewatch in preparation because that's what I always do. If it's not too long, I'll just rewatch the whole series. If something like the next season is coming out, that's just my thing. But you know what? I didn't feel like watching it. Like I started season one and I got to the third episode and I was just like, I don't like this. And I have the right to turn this off. I don't have to keep watching. And that probably sounds small, but that was kind of a big deal for me. So yeah, I was just like, I don't want to watch this. And part of it is, I know Crystal in the beginning had a whole lot of art mistakes. Um, like I, the part that really just got me, I was just like, what is going on here? Cause Yusagi and Ami were talking and Ami, she was like turned to the side, but it looked like her whole eye was sliding off her face. And I was just, I can't even deal with this cause Part of why I like the manga, if you didn't know, Sailor Moon Crystal is the, is like the, not necessarily a reboot of Sailor Moon, but it's like Sailor Moon based directly off the manga. Whereas the show is, it's not the main elements, but there's a whole, like a whole lot more going on in the show. More filler, more different, they added stuff. It's, it's a lot more going on in the 90s show. So one of my favorite things about the manga is just how beautiful it is and the way they're drawn it was just it was just not doing it for me and I know that they they redid the style I'm not sure exactly when they did it but I know like these eternal movies it's a new style that is looking better so I'm happy about that and I do know that um they did fix these things for like the blu-ray release but I was watching on Hulu and I guess they didn't push the fix to there it's just if you buy it so yeah, I couldn't get into it, but I did want to say if you are a Sailor Moon 90s fan and you never read the manga, I do suggest you read it. Mainly for the reason that what I was enjoying that I didn't get to finish um, is the interaction between Usagi and Mamoru. Because um, in the manga, he is not that jerk. He is, they changed his personality in the anime and I don't know why but there is no making fun of Usagi there's no being mean like there's a little playful banter but it's super like romantic and very beautiful images from the beginning and he's very supportive and he's you know questioning his usefulness to her as being the all-powerful Sailor Moon and he was just like who am I to be beside her and it's very better it's very better <laughs> Um, so yeah, I definitely recommend reading the manga just if not for like just the beautiful imagery like some pieces are just so pretty. Um, I'll actually put in one of my favorite images right here just um, that always comes to my head. So I just yeah, I am pressed about getting the art books like if I ever got rich, what I would do like frivolously is get those art books. Um, if you don't know the author Naoko take Takeuchi, Takeuchi, sounds right. She made, I think it's five or six art books to go along with the series. And they have different like just original drawings, them in different outfits, just different stuff going on, sometimes original designs, etc. And I do have one, which is really pretty, but I want, I want all of them. And some of them, one of them is super rare. And I know the two last books, I want to say it's called Eternal. One is called Infinity, but I'm not 100% on that. But they're definitely going, one of them is over 500 for sure. And the other one is always sold for over a thousand because there's only a few copies in existence. But I want them. I need them. Before I just go off on that tangent, I'm looking forward to the movies though in two days. I wanted to do something kind of special, but I'm just feeling a little, I don't feel like stressing myself out. This should be fun, but I do have, I don't know if I have ingredients. So I do have like some molds. So I was like, maybe I can make something cute, but you know, we'll see. And the last show I want to talk about is Hunter Hunter. I did finish the Chimera Ant arc, which I started talking about in my last video and I made it through cause girl, that was the longest arc. Like the final fight was what, like 40 episodes? I mean, I don't. It was an interesting setup for sure. I actually wrote in my notes, taking so long, I'm forgetting what's going on. So 
I guess as far as the negatives about it, I'm interested to know if the manga was written this way as well because there is so much narration and there was a lot of narration in um, like Greed Island or when they were first learning about Nen, like when they're teaching you something because the author did really go into detail about like the power systems and how things work. And so it kind of made sense then, but now it was like so much narration. It would be like, um, character was confused by the move other character just pulled. And I'm like, okay, so just put a confused, make him face, make his face look confused. Why are you telling me this? Like 50% of the time, I was just like, why are you telling me this? Why aren't you just showing me this? So much of that. I'm just like, I am, just show me. And there was so much telling. It was like, it was insane. And I'm really curious to see um, what totally, totally not Mark has to say about this um, arc. I've been, um, unsubscribed to his channel and what he's been doing is blind reacting to the series. He's never seen it before and he reads the manga and I'm assuming, I guess he's watching the show as well because he's including the appropriate clips in his review analysis sort of. And up next, he's made it through all of them and his his next video should be the first part of the Chimera Ant arc. And I'm really curious what he has to say about the narration because he was talking about it in Greed Island and um, I'm really curious what he has to say. When I do watch anime shows, I do like to watch other people's analysis because it brings up things that maybe I wouldn't have thought of and it gives me like, when I can think of these other things and like, you know, put it together, it gives me another perspective, another appreciation for the show. Kind of gives me a whole lot more to think about. And so I really like doing that. For example, some of his comments about Killua during the Greed Island arc, like I sort of caught that while I was watching, but having it hammered in and then watching this arc, I'm like, ah, ah mm -hmm, I see, I see. Cause I also wrote down in my notes that um, the journey, I won't say much, but the journey that the boys have been on and where it has landed is really interesting. It's, it's really interesting. And I am here, Killua was my boy from the beginning and I stick, I'm gonna stick beside him. <laughs> this is random, but if you haven't watched uh, an anime called Japan Sinks, which is on Netflix, I watched an analysis after that one. And if, actually, I'm gonna link that one below. I'm gonna link Mark's below. I'm gonna link the things I'm talking about below. And this analysis I watched that talks about, um, old and new Japan in reference to how the story was being told having that perspective because it's just some stuff you just wouldn't know at being non-Japanese like how the culture plays into the show right that put a whole new perspective on that show for me I'm like that that was really amazing that was really helpful and that that's a that's I will say that's a sad show that's a that's that's a sad show um so I hate when people are like yeah don't get attached to anybody because um then I'm going into the show thinking everybody's about to die I'm like I feel like I I, I just don't like that I just want to say that it's sad for multiple reasons but it's um an enjoyable watch and I think being accompanied by that analysis video really elevated it for me where was I going with this I don't know but I well there's another video I just watched because it really summed up what I thought because I put in my notes that I knew Gon wasn't necessarily a hero. And there's a video I just watched um, called The Morality of Gon Freaks. And of course, don't watch it if you haven't um, seen Hunter x Hunter this far. But a lot of the points that um, YouTuber put in there, that's how I was feeling. It's like you articulated so many of my points. Because it's not that Gon isn't a, it's, it's not that Gon is a bad kid. It's that I knew from the beginning he wasn't necessarily good in the traditional sense. I knew something was off and they led us to know something was off. And now we know something is, something's a little off. Um, that's all I'm gonna say about that. But I do think as long as it took me to get through the end of the arc, once I got there, there were some really great moments and the story all together was really good. So I felt like it was worth it. But I do think we need a little lesson in how to show, not tell what's going on with our characters. 
I should, you don't have to tell me what he's thinking because I should know unless it's something like, um, there are some cases where that's necessary, but generally like, I don't need to know. He was perplexed that, um, this happened. Like, okay, make him look like, oh, huh? show me some, per show me some perplexion. Show me perplexity, purple, show me that, Sh you know, I don't, don't tell me. I think I'm going to take a little break from Hunter x Hunter. I don't know if I should just power through and watch the next arc or if I just should watch something else. I did see that Jujutsu, Jujutsu Kaisen is coming to Netflix. But you know what? I also want to watch Haikyuu because I've been watching like one or two like episodes here and there. And it didn't feel like enough to talk about in these videos, but I felt like... It was funny. Like there were moments I actually laughed out loud in my home. Like it's an enjoyable show so far. I it's like one of those feel good shows. I think so. I don't know what's about to happen, but I don't watch a lot of shows that are chill. Most of the shows I watch is something crazy going on. I don't really watch a whole lot of like chill stuff and this feels chill and it was funny so maybe I will put my time into watching that. Anyway guys I hope you liked the video. If you did please like the video and subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. If you're interested in my Black Fat Girl Try series which I'll link the video over here the first one. My next installment I'm planning to be up a, like a week and a half from the day this video goes up. I started doing the research and I'm gonna actually do some more today. And yeah, my plan is to get those up minimum once a month, but I'm trying to do like every other week-ish. So that will be coming soon. I will see y'all in the next one. Bye.